He shall, from time to time, give the Congress information of the State of the Union, and recommend to their consideration such measures as he shall judge necessary and expedient. Article 2, Section 3 of the United States Constitution. Bon au local, my garden of roses. Let's spend some time talking about last night's State of the Union and the response to the State of the Union. Now, President Donald Trump gave the annual State of the Union address last night in the House of Representatives with a strong focus on the growth our country has seen in the last year and a theme of heroes punctuated by the nearly two dozen individuals and families he invited to see the speech live and spoke of honorably within his speech. Polls afterwards showed it had a 75% approval rating, with 65% of viewers polled stating it made them feel proud. Presidents frequently see a bump in their approval rating after their first State of the Union speech, and I doubt this one will be any different. I suspect the president will break 50% approval for the first time in his presidency in the coming two months. We also heard from Representative Joe Kennedy, whose great uncle was former President John F. Kennedy, who gave this response to the State of the Union from Fall River, Massachusetts, a speech focused more on reinforcing the idea that the United States is a fractured nation, a narrative that is more and more failing to reach the ears of the average American person who sees the growing prosperity and development within our country. He attempted to play on the paranoid emotions of the severe minority who see the president as illegitimate. However, much like many of the other emotion-driven, dishonest practices the Democrats have used in the last two years with regards to the candidate and then President Trump, its power has dwindled in the face of tax bonuses, large tax rebates, and programs that benefit everyone. While Joe Kennedy wanted to paint the nation as divided, the president did nothing but offer his hands to work with members, and I'm quoting from the president's speech, of both parties to protect citizens of every background, color, religion, and creed. It is not the nation that is divided, it is the Democratic Party itself which is divided, and projecting that fractured nature onto the nation only further shows why they lost so handily, not only in the presidential election, but in so many congressional elections as well, and why they will find themselves losing more in the elections in the coming year. The president started his speech with praise for the heroes of our nation, addressing citizens who shield people from gunfire like in the Las Vegas shooting. A Coast Guard petty officer named Ashley Leppert, who worked to save lives as a first responder in Hurricane Harvey and David Wahlberg, a firefighter who worked in the struggle against California's wildfires. He praised the representative from Louisiana, Steve Scalise, who was shot while practicing with the congressional baseball team in Virginia of June last year, and within four months after nearly dying, returned to work and gave a speech about his experience. Within the first five minutes of this speech, he had already been interrupted to give a standing ovation to the hardworking Americans who worked to save Representative Scalise's life. And again, for the president himself in stating, these are the people we are elected to serve. Given the large groups standing on both sides of the aisle in the House of Representatives, the Black Caucus was a, but a small holdout almost unnoticeable in their refusal to stand or clap when the president announced that African-American unemployment was at the lowest rate ever recorded, within records that go back to 1966 when such numbers were divided up among racial demographics. And as the president continued detailing his own successes within the White House, those on the left of the room stood to applause less and less instead offering their dour and in many cases defeated faces to be caught by cameras, a pattern only often broken up by the occasional cut to minority leader Nancy Pelosi, who would lean over to the person next to her to comment with a warm smile when she stood to clap. He spoke about the nearly 2.4 million jobs created in the last year, the more than $8 trillion gained in the stock market, the landmark tax cut plan and reinvestment by major companies into the United States, the repeal of the punishing individual mandate of Obamacare, and the tax bonuses American workers have received, calling this time 
our new American moment. Apple is investing $350 billion into manufacturing in the United States. Chrysler is moving a manufacturing plant from Mexico to Michigan. And Toyota and Mazda are opening manufacturing plants in Alabama. And having lived in these places and seen the dependence of the people these states have on manufacturing and automotive jobs, this is absolutely amazing. He even called on Congress to empower good workers and remove federal employees who undermine the public trust or fail the American people, a subtle nod to his desire to drain the swamp. And from addressing the family of two young girls who were mur murdered brutally by MS-13 in 2016, to praising an ICE agent whose name I suspect the president got wrong on the first time meeting him, referring to him as both DJ and CJ, an ICE agent who had his murder ordered by MS-13. The president boldly covered his somewhat controversial four-pillared immigration policy, which includes the plan for offering citizenship to 100, excuse me, 1.8 million immigrants brought into the United States by their families, though he did not use the word dreamers, securing our borders through the building of the southern border wall, ending the visa lottery program in order to focus on merit and skill, and the ending of chain migration policies. For every point of the president's speech, he also had a face or a family to show the House of Representatives and the American people, each one unique and proud. And while permanent scowls of Senator Sanders, the Black and Women's Caucuses, and many others were there to sneer, those invited to the State of the Union speech looked past to a president who offered a message of prosperity a message of hard work and dedication, a message that sounded more like the American dream than I have ever heard in my life. In watching the State of the Union, even through the cynical lenses with which I view Washington, I felt prouder to be an American than I have in years. I believe that we will less and less see the power of victimhood being used as a political cudgel in the United States because of the financial prosperity and reduction in unemployment, the support for small businesses and forthcoming infrastructure jobs, and the shrinking ability Democrats have to make people feel like they're powerless and divided along racial or gender lines. There will undoubtedly be holdouts, and these voices certainly have volume on the internet and within the severely left-leaning mainstream media. But pursuing such underhanded methods will only undermine them more, because our president and our Congress, through dedication and focus, are making America great again. Those so partisanly to the left may not like it now, but when the checks start coming in at the beginning of February and the last tax returns go out between now and April, the silent majority will have less reason to be silent with their neighbors and friends who try and push racial segregation, victimhood, outright lies, and propaganda. You may not like the president, but as I saw in a recent trending hashtag on Twitter, many people are saying, I don't like the president, but he's working for everyone and he's restoring the American dream. It was a very powerful speech. Uh, I mean, honestly, I haven't heard a State of the Union address that good in my life. And yes, the State of the Union address is a very delicately crafted speech with dozens of speechwriters working on it right up until the moment the president gives it. But nonetheless, this message was very, very much a message from the president to all people. And it wasn't a speech that focused entirely on his base. In fact, I'd argue that he was very careful to not speak in any language that directly addressed his base and instead addressed the people as a whole. He didn't use words like make America great again. He didn't use words like dreamers. He didn't use words like America first. Instead, he just went into detail about why he's, or how he's putting American first. He went into detail about how America is being, becoming great again. He spoke on the fact that he is giving these dreamers, as they're called, uh, a, a pathway to citizenship rather directly. And he condemned the rather large problems 
that are still in our country and gave the Congress a very strong means by which uh, to, per, you know, to move forward and fix some of these problems as the president should, because th that is the point of the State of the Union, to make sure the president uh, gives Congress what they need to move forward to solve problems. Just a second, LT, quiet. What we have now is, a, for the first time, the president actually reaching out to everyone and showing them rather directly that this is not a problem that we have. This is a country that is being rebuilt from a terrible, terrible crash that began in 2007. And despite the economic prosperity at the very top, has left us in a recession for nearly 10 years. And beyond that point, we're now finally rebuilding instead of jumping to the conclusion that we are all victims of some sort in a horrible fascist system. Those arguments aren't going to work anymore because people are more free. They're free from regu more free from regulation. They're more free from burdenous taxes and invasive mandated uh, uh, taxes, such as Obamacare's individual mandates. And as uh, the year goes on, we're only going to be seeing this happen more and more. The president is going to get his wall. The president is going to get his infrastructure jobs, which are going to rebuild our roads, our bridges, uh, improve our waterways, everything of the sort. And honestly, I all I can do at this point is thank the president and salutes. Thank you for listening, and I will see you next time. Bonsoir. Mm -hmm.